Good evening, uh, dear colleagues. We are now back from our break and we are about to begin uh, with our debate on the EU-UK agreement and territorial consequences of Brexit. We have uh, the great honor to have with us uh, Mr. Loïc chesnay girard the President of the Regional Council of Brittany and Chair of the COR Contact Group with the UK, and Sadiq Khan, the Mayor of uh, London. Uh, dear colleagues, Mr. Barnier informed us about the impossibility for him to join us today, a circumstance which we fully understand since the negotiations with the United Kingdom concerning the trade agreement are still ongoing. I have nevertheless decided to keep our exchanges, since more than ever the specific needs of regions and cities must be spelled out. A no deal, a hard Brexit, is not an option for us. Today, we will hear the concerns of many elected politicians. In Flanders, new customs procedures will affect the fluidity and the freight flows. German regions will face trade disruption of transport vehicles and machinery. Ireland will be the most exposed, with 14% of its trade exports going directly to Britain. There, the prevention of a hard border is essential. And I welcome yesterday's agreement on the implementation of the withdrawal agreement and protocol on Ireland and Northern Ireland, which will also guarantee a specific role to Northern Ireland's devoted administration. In this contest, we suggest the use of territorial and cross-border cooperation tools, such as the European Grouping of Territorial Cooperation and Interreg, because we can really reach to some certain goals using them. Dear colleagues, it is of extreme importance to assure that all regions directly affected by the territorial consequences of Brexit can count on the adjustment fund of 5 billion euros proposed by President Michel. Also, for this reason, we need the multi-financial framework, the MFF, to be adopted now as a political assembly, we look forward to enhance our partnership and I would like to thank Loïc Chesnay Girard, who chairs our contact group, for framing a way forward and making emerge fresh occasions for establishing new partnership with our British colleagues. And we also welcome today the Mayor of London, Mr. Sadiq Khan. Dear Mayor, let me start by reiterating, I will always respect, but deeply regret, the democratic decision of the British people. Having studied in London and lived for several years, I have always had a personal affinity with your city. London will always be a European city that champions diversity, openness, innovation and opportunity. Dear Mayor, even after the current end game is played out, it will take many more years to establish new boundaries and understand what this separation and its consequences will mean for all of us and our communities. There are no winners, no winners from Brexit. As regional and local leaders, we need to come together in the spirit of European cooperation. We need to assess the impact of Brexit together and hold our governments to account to protect communities and livelihoods. We need to continue to cooperate on global issues such as the pandemic, the migration, the demographic change, the climate change. Our committee the Committee of the Regions is open, as London is open. We are open to you and every local leader from every British city, local authority, all devolved administration, to work together. It is through dialogue, compromise and multilateralism, not inward-looking nationalism, that we best represent the interests of our citizens. Let me propose to you today, Mayor, 
that each year we invite the main city, local government associations and devoted administration leaders together to share experiences and unite in areas of mutual interest. We must support cooperation between our universities, our regions, our civil society and small and medium enterprises and have a vibrant partnership that is vital in responding to climate change and delivering the sustainable development goals. Only by cooperating, dear colleagues, dear mayor, only by coordinating our efforts and pooling our resources, we can best meet the needs of our citizens beyond Brexit. Your participation today is a first step of fruitful dialogue, building not unraveling decades of friendship and cooperation with mayors and regional leaders from all across the European Union. So with great pleasure, I now give you the floor. Lloyd Chesnay Gerard, you have the floor. We cannot, we cannot hear you. Excuse me, excuse me. Je pensais que c'était le maire de Londres, Monsieur Sadik Khan, qui parlait en premier. Mais si je comprends bien, c'est à mon tour. Oui, c'est vous, c'est vous qui parlez d'abord. Ok, très bien. Merci beaucoup et ravi encore une fois, cher Monsieur. Ravi de vous voir. Cher président Titi Costas, ravi de vous voir aussi, euh, ravi Bienvenue. à vos côtés en visio. J'espère qu'on se reverra tous physiquement très rapidement. Nous sommes dans la dernière ligne droite du Brexit. Quelle que soit l'issue des négociations, il va y avoir des impacts, vous l'avez dit, monsieur le président, des impacts de manière différente en fonction des territoires. Nous serons tous impactés, mais avec des chocs plus ou moins violents, de manière asymétrique dans les différentes régions d'Europe. Et euh, étant président de la région Bretagne, proche voisine du Royaume-Uni, je peux vous dire que nous savons bien que nous allons euh, subir des chocs conséquents début d'année prochaine, qu'il y ait accord ou pas accord. Je sais aussi que beaucoup d'autres collègues partout en Europe seront concernés tout autant que moi. Merci encore, Monsieur le Président Titi Costas, d'avoir permis la création du comité de négociation, de discussion entre euh, le, le groupe de contact pardon, entre le, les régions de l'Union et euh, du Royaume-Uni. Nous avons déjà organisé deux réunions, deux réunions de travail qui nous ont permis de ressentir l'envie collective que nous avions tous de continuer à travailler pour préparer l'avenir, pour garder des liens entre nos territoires, pour bâtir des ponts et construire des stratégies qui nous permettront, au-delà de cette euh, séparation, voulu démocratiquement, mais que nous regrettons tous, de pouvoir continuer à travailler à des collaborations renforcées entre le Royaume-Uni et l'Union européenne et entre, bien entendu, toutes nos collectivités, toutes nos régions qui euh, ont beaucoup de liens, qui ne veulent pas voir euh, dissoudre dans les années qui viennent. C'est un défi majeur pour nous que de travailler là-dessus. Nous avons euh, euh, la responsabilité d'y travailler maintenant et de ne pas nous laisser distraire par euh, la période compliquée, compliquée pour le Brexit, par le Brexit, compliqué aussi, bien entendu, par le Covid que nous subissons tous. Les réunions se sont déjà tenues à deux reprises. Nous continuerons dans les prochaines semaines et dans les prochains mois. Nous avons tous conscience que nous devons travailler à l'unité, travailler à la solidarité. Ce sont les valeurs qui sont les nôtres. Et bien entendu, de rester unis derrière les négociateurs. Et derrière, bien entendu, Michel Barnier, qui est excusé aujourd'hui, le négociateur en chef qui assume la responsabilité de cette négociation entre, du côté du, du, de l'Europe à 27. Nous aurions pu vivre un éclatement, nous aurions pu vivre des tensions, nous aurions pu vivre des tentations de négociations bilatérales en fonction de telle ou telle spécificité dans nos États membres et dans nos territoires. Nous sommes tous restés unis. C'est important, je le crois. Et c'est important de rester ainsi unis. Et le corollaire de cette unité, c'est la solidarité. Solidarité entre nous tous, solidarité entre les régions qui vont subir plus et celles qui vont subir moins, 
solidarité, bien entendu, de l'Union européenne envers ces régions. Et sur ce point-là, il est important de faire en sorte que les choses se mettent en place très rapidement. Nous attendons beaucoup de la réserve d'ajustement. Elle a été annoncée, elle doit se mettre en place très rapidement. Elle est la bienvenue, bien entendu. Quand je dis très rapidement, c'est dès le début de l'année 2021. Qu'il y ait accord ou non accord, parce qu'il y aura des changements et des chocs, je pense à plein de sujets que nous vivons sur nos territoires. Et il faut surtout, je le redis, que cette réserve soit gérée de façon décentralisée, comme l'ont souhaité les députés européens. Les députés européens avaient exprimé un souhait très clair, c'est que les régions d'Europe gèrent la réserve de solidarité, la réserve d'ajustement, pardon. Il ne faut pas que cette réserve d'ajustement remonte au capital national. La gestion par les capitales nationales ne me semble pas conforme aux souhaits des parlementaires et n'est pas conforme, bien entendu, aux régions que nous sommes. Et je pense que les capitales européennes ont bien d'autres sujets sur lesquels elles doivent se concentrer et se consacrer actuellement. Cela, c'est un point important. L'autre point important, c'est bien entendu les sommes, 5 milliards pour le moment annoncés. Nous verrons comment les choses s'organisent, mais je crains que nous soyons loin du compte. Toujours est-il, il convient de redire notre ambition de solidarité, notre ambition d'avoir une Europe qui protège, qui le dit et qui le fait. C'est un travail très important et faire en sorte, bien entendu, qu'on garde de très belles relations avec nos amis du Royaume-Uni. On sera ravis d'entendre dans quelques instants Monsieur le maire de Londres. Et comme l'a dit le président Titi Costas, nous avons l'ambition, bien entendu, de continuer le travail pour créer des liens, toujours des liens, pour préparer l'avenir et la relation multilatérale entre l'ensemble de nos territoires. Merci à tous et à très vite. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Mayor Han, you have the floor. Mayor of London, welcome. Thank you very much. Um, uh, thank you, President, for your kind words uh, as well. It's an honor to be able to take part in this plenary session today. I thought when I was preparing this speech that there might be a trade deal agreed now between the UK and the EU, but alas, It looks like the negotiations are not only being pushed to the wire, but are in a very precarious state, as you said. So I must start by urging all sides to keep on talking, because there is so much at stake, not just for London and the whole of the UK, but for cities, regions and countries across Europe. It would be a massive mistake of historic proportions to give up at this stage, to simply walk away because the negotiations have become too hard. If a trade deal cannot be reached in the next few days, then I'd urge Prime Minister Boris Johnson and the EU to extend the transition period. This would be the obvious, right and sensible thing to do. A no deal outcome should simply not be an option. It would be a lose lose situation of both the UK and the EU, costing jobs, reducing growth and hitting living standards across Europe. It would also be a huge political failure at the worst possible time, just when we're at a crucial point in our fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. Every region across Europe is in the middle of both a health and an economic crisis on an unprecedented scale. This means that all our efforts should be focused on getting through these enormous challenges together, not preparing for the devastating consequences of a no deal Brexit and the further economic and social damage this would cause. So I must take this opportunity to call for calm and wise heads to prevail over the key days to come. However, The main reason I wanted to join you today was to talk about how, despite Brexit, we can continue to work together across our regions. I come with this message as an ambassador for London, but also as a friend, a colleague and a proud European. It's no secret that I campaigned for Britain to remain as part of the European Union. The EU is an institution like no other in the world. And it's an institution that I'm proud my country was a part of for so many years. There are many Londoners like me who will never forget the extent to which it's been a force for good in the world and how much it's achieved 
for us from workers' rights and environmental protections to entrenching equal pay and the rights of women. And that's why I'll continue to campaign for us to have a closer economic and political relationship with our EU friends in the future. But Brexit has now happened. And even though it's difficult and disappointing for many of us in London, I believe we have an obligation to look to the future, not the past, and to strive to work together as much as possible on our shared challenges across our cities, regions, and countries. And that's why I see a big part of my job as ensuring that London remains a key partner for Brussels and every European city, region, and nation. Even though we're no longer part of the union, we will forever be connected. Our histories are intertwined, and I believe the same can be true of our futures. There's common interests we can all unite around, and there are shared challenges we can and must meet together, whether it's on how we can tackle air pollution and the climate emergency, how we can build our cities and regions back better, fairer and greener following this terrible pandemic, how we can fight terrorism or how we can create more equal inclusive cities at a time when nativist populism and the politics of division is on the rise across Europe. So friends, let me just end with this. Even though we're going through extremely gloomy and grueling times on many fronts, I'm optimistic that London, the UK and the EU all have bright futures ahead of us and that the historic bonds that we've established over many years can and will endure. In London, we'll always consider ourselves part of the European family. Our connection and collaboration is rooted in mutual interests and common values. We will always be open and welcoming to people from across Europe to live, work and study in London. And I know that with the right approach, we can continue to achieve remarkable things together as we go forward, not only for the cities, countries and institutions we represent, but crucially for the people we serve. It was Erasmus, a name that now embodies European cooperation and understanding, who famously said, fortune favours the audacious. And now, at this turning point in European history, it's time for us to be audacious and bold with our approach to a post-Brexit Europe. And this means, now more than ever, putting aside the animosity, differences and anger that many expect and working together across our regions to find solutions that bring hope and prosperity to us all. Thank you. Thank you very, Thank much. You very much, Mayor, Mayor Khan. Khan. Really, really inspirational, inspirational intervention. Uh, your really inspiring intervention. I would like now to uh, give uh, the floor to Mark Speich for two minutes. Mark, you have the floor. Vielen Dank, Herr Präsident. Sehr geehrter Herr Präsident Schöner Girard, sehr geehrter Herr Bürgermeister Kahn, ganz herzlichen Dank für Ihre Ausführungen, die den Blick in die Zukunft gerichtet haben. Ich wünsche Michel Barnier, der ja auch heute bei uns gewesen wäre, alles Gute für die Verhandlungen, die er nun führt. Es wäre wirklich gut, wenn wir zu einem Abschluss mit einem Deal kommen. Dass wir die Folgen heute schon spüren, ist uns allen schmerzhaft bewusst. Wir sind in einer Situation in meiner eigenen Region in Nordrhein-Westfalen, wo wir schon heute die Folgen des Brexit spüren. 2015 war Großbritannien für unsere Region Nordrhein-Westfalen noch der drittwichtigste Handelspartner mit einem Exportvolumen von insgesamt 14 Milliarden Euro. 2019 ist das bereits auf 10,7 Milliarden Euro gesunken. Man sieht, die Unsicherheit, die den Prozess begleitet hat, hat dazu geführt, dass sich wirtschaftliche, ähm, äh, wirtschaftliche Beziehungen schon verändert haben, neu organisiert haben zum Schaden unserer Beziehungen. 
ich möchte deswegen auch, wie Bürgermeister Kahn das getan hat, den Blick nach vorne richten und möchte, gerade weil er an Erasmus von Rotterdam, den großen Europäer, erinnert hat, den Blick auf die Wissenschafts-, auf die Forschungsbeziehungen lenken, weil hier auch nach dem Brexit, jenseits des Brexit, eine große Zukunft unserer Beziehungen liegt. Wir haben momentan über 270 Kooperationspartnerschaften mit unserer Region und universitären Einrichtungen im Vereinigten Königreich. Und für viele ist die Finanzierung durch Programme der Europäischen Union von ganz besonderer und entscheidender Relevanz. Die Wissenschaft lebt vom Austausch. Das Vereinigte Königreich bleibt für europäische Studierende und Forschende ein attraktives Ziel. Und gleichzeitig bildet der Austausch mit Forschungseinrichtungen anderer Länder einen wichtigen Pfeiler für die Exzellenz der britischen Forschungslandschaft. Beide Seiten müssen deshalb ein fundamentales Interesse am Fortbestand dieser Beziehungen haben. Und daran sollten wir gemeinsam arbeiten. Vielen Dank. Thank you very much. The, the floor now to Michael Murphy for two minutes, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President. Um, Understandably, uh, Mr. Barnier uh, couldn't make it to uh, today's debate. Uh, let me take this opportunity to again uh, reaffirm uh, our support uh, in the crucial uh, days ahead uh, as a deal or indeed uh, no deal hangs uh, in the balance. Um, throughout the, I suppose, the last four years uh, since the Brexit referendum, focus for Ireland and ultimately other countries, our regions, was also always going to be about preparedness. Deal or do, no deal, an urgent focus on readiness for the end of the transition period is now urgently needed. As chair of the Econ Commission, we want to ensure a close analysis of the trade patterns with the e UK and that the Brexit adjustment reserve is fine-tuned. The reserve is not meant to be just a fisheries fund, but instead must be used to make sure all extra exposed regions and sectors are financially supported. The BAR needs to be predictable, rapid and flexible so it can have the optimal impact. We welcome the agreement in principle between the co-chairs of the EU-UK Joint Committee on the Withdrawal Agreement. We look forward to the follow-up in law to ensure the continuity of peace on the island of Ireland. We stress an inclusive, place-based approach to assessing the sectorial fallout of Brexit. Mr. Khan, we do need an ever closer collaboration between and amongst EU and UK local and regional authorities. The COR UK contact group is a great vehicle to monitor, monitor this uh, impact. In conclusion, the double whammy of a pandemic and Brexit threatens to undo years of positive results of EU funding and make poorer regions poorer and the rich richer. I thank you for your commitment and look forward to the exchanges. Thank you. The floor now to Maria Isilda Gomez Prazeres, please. Good afternoon, dear Mr. President and fellow colleagues. A special greeting to my colleague Sadiq Khan. Portugal is the home to one of the largest British born populations outside the UK. A community of more than 40,000 people, most of them in Algarve. Um, and uh, this number has doubled since the Brexit was decided in 2016. Every year, the region of Algarve and the city of Portimão in particular welcomes thousands of British tourists, which are the main tourist mar market of the region representing around 40% of the foreign tourists in our region. Also, the UK is the home uh, to 400,000 Portuguese workers and students. Concerning these economic, social and political bonds, a no deal could have a negative impact for the economy and impose restrictions of these citizens. For example, it will highly affect 
air travel and the buying power of the British visitors and the residents, which will have a huge economic impact on a region like the Algarve, whose economy mainly depends on tourism. That is why I think that it's very important that the committee discuss and supervise this issue, which can profoundly affect the economy recovery of many of our regions. The economic recovery after the pandemic will depend to a large extent on tourism. So we must not miss this opportunity. I think the agreement needs to take in account this local and regional realities. We need our doors to remain as open as possible. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. The floor now to Prime Minister Elio Di Rupo. Prime Minister, you have the floor. Oui. Um, J'espère que vous m'entendez. Mon cher Président et mes chers collègues, avant toute chose, je voudrais saluer les collègues qui travaillent sans relâche au sein du groupe de contact Royaume-Uni. En réalité, disons-le clairement, ça fait des mois que nous vivons au gré des sauts d'humeur de Boris Johnson. Et son attitude ne nous permet pas de voir clair en l'avenir des relations entre l'Union européenne et le Royaume-Uni. Et cette situation crée de grandes incertitudes pour des milliers d'entreprises et des centaines de milliers de travailleurs qui ont peur de perdre leur emploi. Or, l'incertitude est un grand poison économique et psychologique. Pour ma région, la Wallonie, le Brexit, no deal, pourrait représenter jusqu'à 5000 pertes d'emploi. Euh, je dirais aussi que, À l'échelle européenne, les échanges entre les pays européens et le Royaume-Uni sont essentiels. Pour l'anecdote, mon cher Président, le vaccin actuellement inséminé au Royaume-Uni provient d'Europe, comme d'ailleurs l'a signalé le Premier ministre fédéral belge, Alexandre de Croix. Mes chers collègues, vous le savez peut-être, ma région, la Wallonie, dispose d'un pouvoir législatif important qui lui confère la faculté d'accepter ou de ne pas accepter les accords commerciaux internationaux. Pour être clair, je n'hésiterai pas de demander à mon Parlement d'utiliser son droit de veto, comme ce fut le cas pour le CETA, si les futurs accords commerciaux avec le Royaume-Uni transgressent les lignes rouges fixées par mon gouvernement et par la plupart des pays de l'Union européenne. Je veux aussi mettre en exergue la nécessité de trouver un accord dans l'intérêt des régions européennes qui seront les plus proportionnellement impactées, je pense en particulier à ma région sœur, la Flandre. Voilà, mon cher Président, je voudrais saluer notre ami la maire de Londres, qui est une ville ouverte sur le monde et en particulier sur l'Europe, et saluer merci. le travail formidable de Michel Barnier. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Merci. The floor now to Michael. Rhys Berman for three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Barnier is not here today for obvious reasons. Uh, he is now negotiating, I think, the last hours out of the period since the referendum, which is some 40 months. We are now, I think, in the last 40 hours of the period until the deadline. And we really need to know uh, what the the agreement between the UK and the EU will be. Of course, I feel that there will be an agreement because uh, having no uh, no deal Brexit, uh, I feel is not an option. If Mr. Barnier would have been here, I would have liked to discuss with him the this, this different subjects he is negotiating now, like the, the different logistics at the seaports, at our airports, like the, the level playing field, the trade we are uh, going to do uh, together. And, especially the Irish border and fisheries. Those latter two subjects really affect the lives of many very directly, especially in Ireland where uh, even peace is at stake. So we feel that uh, the negotiations Mr. Barnier is doing is very important. And because nothing is decided until everything is decided, uh, this is of course uh, 
of major importance and we still don't know we, actually we don't know anything i'd say for what the, the outcome of these negotiations will be so i wish him good luck and i hope that they, uh, he will uh, have a good deal for both sides of the, the future border. Uh, on the other hand, I am very happy that Mr. Khan is here today. As an administrator of the uh, Amsterdam metropolitan area, uh, I can see that we have deep ties between the mainland of Europe and the UK. We have strong cultural ties, we have economic ties, we have a lot of ties between our people, people who live in Amsterdam and have their family in the UK and vice versa. This, of course, goes for many countries across uh, across Europe. And we feel that we should keep these ties, even if uh, at what we at the national level might feel that is an acceptable a, a decision of the British people we need to accept, but a decision we find very hard to, to respect, because it's obviously to a lot of people in the Netherlands folly. At least uh, the, to leave the EU, even risking a no deal Brexit. So, we, I would really like to offer to Mr. Khan uh, that our uh, cooperation from Amsterdam, from the Netherlands, and I think uh, I speak for most people in Europe, and we say that we want to keep cooperating on cultural, economic, and on social uh, levels uh, as much as we can, because we feel the, the British people are part of the European family, and we should uh, try to keep our family close. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. The floor now to Jura Droba for two and a half minutes. Kieran McCarthy for three for two minutes. Yeah, thanks, President, uh, and thanks, Mayor Khan. Um, and on, on behalf of the uh, European Alliance Group, many thanks for your contribution here this afternoon. And um, there are strong historical um, and personal connections between my city of Cork uh, and London. Uh, and I, I still hope, and I certainly hope, that they will actually continue and grow even stronger. Uh, there are 10 return flights from my regional airport in Cork every day, and that they're still going to be there even post Brexit. Um, a number of years ago, um, our group, the European Alliance, held a meeting in Runnymede. Um, and while it's near Heathrow, um, it's more famous for the Magna Carta, Carta uh, a treaty which is cherished uh, by many British people, but more importantly, a charter which created peace and protected rights. Um, that is why um, we welcome the agreement in principle on the implementation of the Withdrawal Treaty uh, and the Protocol in Ireland, Northern Ireland, um, which has as, as its background the need to preserve peace uh, and the integrity of the island of Ireland economy. Let's hope that the meeting uh, tonight between the British Prime Minister and the Commission uh, Commission President um, steps forward um, the Brexit process. Um, my wish is, though, um, that we do not penalise our young people for the madness of a few elite uh, who painted the side of a bus with fictitious numbers. Uh, we need to find a way and that we recognise their diplomas, allow people to work and live in the UK or across the EU. Democracy needs to be respected, but it needs to be on the basis of truth, fact, and honesty um, for the people of Scotland, Northern Ireland and London uh, in a partnership of nations. Um, it is strange the nations um, did not have a voice. Um, we also, the EU has fantastic programs and I am afraid that over, that over 40 years of cooperation will develop at a slower pace if we do not have Verizon and um, Interreg or, or her Erasmus. Uh, hence why I do support um, the call of our president here this afternoon for a meeting of minds uh, to see what practical steps can be developed uh, between the EU regions uh, and the UK regions. Uh, many thanks, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Is Mr. Droba ready now? You're right, Droba. Two and a yes, half can, minutes. Can you hear me? Two and a half. Dear Mr. President, dear Mr. Khan, dear colleagues, uh, the aim of the transition period was to reach a new and fair partnership for the future. Regardless of the outcome of negotiations, Brexit will create new ways of trading in goods and services, cross-border mobility, and new exchanges. Everyone on both sides will be affected, and so must prepare for the change. It is crucial that support is provided to local and regional authorities that will mostly be affected by Brexit. Thus, we very much welcome the announcement of Brexit Adjustment Reserve, amounting to 5 billion euro in support for those countries and sectors which are most affected. 
In my country, Slovakia, the British investments uh, have covered sectors producing rubber and plastic, metal and motor vehicles. A no-deal Brexit would disrupt and hit hard our industry, translating into a loss of jobs and investment capacity in the amount of 4.5 billion euro. Therefore, trade together with transport and coordination of social security standards are the top priorities of the Slovak Republic on the way to a joint agreement. On a more personal note, uh, we from former Eastern Europe feel particularly sad for the UK leaving the EU, but it's just the fact of life. And we hope that the uh, UK may be leaving the EU, but is definitely not leaving Europe. However, given the current secret circumstances, we would like to learn if there will be joint emergency measures at the EU level, which will be adopted in case of no deal. If so, in which sectors, what is the scope and what's the time frame of these measures? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bernd Vos for two minutes, please. Ja, vielen Dank. Sehr geehrter Herr Präsident Girard, sehr geehrter Oberbürgermeister Sadikan. Ich bedauere auch natürlich als Grüner die Entscheidung zum Brexit sehr. Ich komme ja aus Schleswig-Holstein, der nördlichsten Region Deutschlands und nur die Nordsee trennt uns. Und das ist die lange, lange historische Verbindung zwischen unseren Regionen. Aber wir haben die demokratische Entscheidung der Volksabstimmung zu respektieren. Und es ist wichtig, dass der Ausschuss der Region mit seiner Kontaktgruppe den Dialog zwischen den Regionen und Kommunen aufrechterhält und befeuert. Sehr geehrter Herr Bürgermeister Sadikan, und ich hoffe, dass viele Regionen und Städte, obwohl Großbritannien nicht mehr in der EU ist, Gemeinsamkeiten stärken und ihre Zusammenarbeit fortsetzen werden. Diejenigen, die mit viel Populismus den Brexit betrieben haben, werden es schwer haben, ihre Versprechen auch umzusetzen. Und es trifft alle wirtschaftlich, das Königreich wie auch den Rest der EU. Sie haben es bereits vorher, Herr Dr. Speich, sehr, sehr deutlich gemacht, was es für Deutschland bedeutet. Und ich warne aber auch davor, jetzt auf, bei den Verhandlungen mit dem Zeitdruck auf den letzten Metern ein schlechtes Abkommen zuzulassen. Das wäre fahrlässig, würde der Wirtschaft und der Gesellschaft langfristig schaden und wäre Wasser auf die Mühlen der Populisten in anderen Ländern. Die EU darf in diesem Nervenkrieg nicht ihre Prinzipien über Bord werfen. Und es muss sichergestellt sein, dass beim Freihandelsabkommen Standards, faire Wettbewerbsstandards gesichert sind und gehalten werden. Verstöße, Sanktionen, es muss eine Streitschlichtung geben und es darf keine Hintertür für Tricks geben. Und es muss auch Schluss sein mit Dingen wie das Binnenmarktgesetz, wo letztlich mit dem Feuer gespielt wird, ein Nordirland-Abkommen in Frage gestellt wird und dadurch letztlich auch ein Karfreitagsabkommen gefährdet ist. Der Brexit ist für Irland eine besonders große wirtschaftliche und gesellschaftliche Herausforderung und wir müssen solidarisch sein mit unseren irischen Freunden. Aber auch viele andere Regionen in Europa sind betroffen. Und als letztes Wort, ein bisschen Optimismus, das beste Danke. grüne Angebot für ein Abkommen ist, wir bleiben in der gemeinsamen EU. Thank you very much. And the floor now to the mayor of Warsaw, Rafał Truskowski. Hi, Sadiq. It's, it's good to, to see you. London has always been European and always will be European. Unfortunately, we know our populists quite well uh, in our cities. We observe them uh, every other day. And I wanted to tell you that Brexit does not make sense economically or politically. But at the end of the day, we will do everything to prevail. I mean, of course, Brexit is a, a result of manipulation of populism, of uh, years of scapegoating and so on and so forth. But what we need to do is we need to create a, a real political alliance with or without a deal, because there is ample room for cooperation with London, with other British cities and regions. And I think that that's exactly what we should do. We should cooperate. We should create a political alliance to continue uh, cooperation in questions such as climate change, digital transformation, students exchanges, and so on and so forth. And we can do it. Uh, we cooperate with the cities in the neighborhood and we should uh, have even stronger links to London because London needs to remain a European. And of course, you know, those populists are here, those populists are in most of our countries, but they will not last forever. And that's why I wanted to tell you, uh, Sadiq, that you can count on us and the Committee of the Regions should be a focal meeting point 
for all of us, for the British cities, for the British regions, and all of us from the European Union in order to keep the cooperation going. We need you guys and you need us. Good luck. Thank you very much, Rafael. I would like to give the floor now for his uh, reaction to the mayor of London, uh, Sadiq Khan. Mayor, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, President. Can I just say how emotional uh, the last uh, few minutes have been, the last half an hour, the last 40 minutes, to have from our friends in Europe warmth, uh, affection, uh, fraternity, at a time when, frankly speaking, I'm embarrassed at the way my government has dealt with negotiations with the European Union. The reality is, and you said this, President, in your introduction, no outcome in relation to negotiations, no outcome can be better than what we had over the last few uh, decades. But what's been really inspiring about the last half an hour, 45 minutes, is between us, we're already coming up with solutions through the cities and regions to make sure that we can continue our friendship, as, as Rafael, my good friend, uh, has said just before me. And that ingenuity that Europeans have always shown is going to be needed. And I'd just remind you by way of ending, yes, we may have uh, had the first vaccine in yesterday, uh, yesterday being uh, administered in London. That vaccine was uh, uh, invented by Germans and manufactured in Belgium. And that's just one example of the greatness us Europeans can do when we work together. So thank you very much for the work the Committee of Regions uh, does. I will reassure you that London will always be open, open to friendship, open to business, open to people. And I'm looking forward to people to people working together, business to business, our universities, our civic society, and us leaders of cities and regions. Mayor, Mayor can I, I really, I really hope, hope and I wish, and I wish to, become to become Prime Minister, Prime Minister soon, soon one, day one day in the UK, the UK so, so that you can bring, bring back the United, United Kingdom, Kingdom into, into the European, European Union. Union. We would we certainly, certainly want, want that. Thank you very, Thank you very much, much for your time. time. And uh, let us uh, now move, dear friends and colleagues, to our next uh, speakers on that matter. I would like to give the floor to Alexandra Durkiewicz for one minute, please. Uh, thank you. all the colleagues who are working with me in the UK contact group. I just would like to stress the fact that our relations, our local relations and relations in our regions, no matter whatever will happen, should be strong and we should keep not only in touch, but we should also keep our relations. I just would like to say only one example because you may say that Poland is quite far away and Gdansk is quite far away, but Gdansk is the biggest, uh, the biggest harbour in, uh, in the Baltic Sea, also uh, working for the whole European trade. And no matter what will happen, this will be real difficulties without these, um, this tragedy, these talks, and uh, without the um, without the agreement so uh, all of us we should do wh whatever is possible to keep uk as close as it is possible to the europe thank you thank you very much the floor now for uh, one minute is to Brigitte Onne, please. Sehr geehrte Kolleginnen und Kollegen aus dem ADR, zunächst möchte ich, auch wenn er heute aus aktuellem Anlass nicht dabei sein kann, Michel Mandier, meinen herzlichen Dank für seine bisherigen Verhandlungen mit dem Vereinigten Königreich aussprechen. Weil über 95 Prozent der Verhandlungsthemen konnten unter seiner klugen Verhandlungsführung geeint werden. Das war harte und gute Arbeit. Übrig geblieben sind drei Themenbereiche, die jetzt auf der höchsten politischen Ebene in Gesprächen mit der Kommissionspräsidentin und dem britischen Premierministerium 
Premierminister gelöst werden müssen. Letztlich geht es um die politische Grundsatzfrage, wie eine möglichst enge Kooperation mit dem erklärten britischen Ziel einer Souveränität in Einklang zu bringen ist. Diese Frage muss der britische Premierminister nun endlich beantworten. Vergessen wir nicht, er selbst hat die politische Erklärung im Oktober 2019 unterschrieben, die sich zum Level Playing Field bekennt. Sollten die Verhandlungen jetzt scheitern, würde ich das außerordentlich bedauern. Ein harter Brexit hinterlässt nur Verlierer. Das gilt im Übrigen auch für mein Bundesland Niedersachsen, was enge Beziehungen zum Vereinigten Königreich hat. Gleichwohl kann es keine Einigung um jeden Preis geben. Wir alle können uns nicht wünschen, dass vor den Toren des Binnenmarktes ein Unterbietungswettbewerb beginnt, der unsere sozialen und umweltpolitischen Standards untergräbt. Dafür lohnt es sich, hart zu verhandeln und notfalls, notfalls wirklich das Risiko des Scheiterns der Verhandlungen einzugehen. Vielen Dank. Thank you very much. The floor now to Maria Angeles Elorza Zubiria for one minute. Sí, mis primeras palabras son para agradecer el trabajo de Michel Barnier y de todo el equipo negociador que le ha acompañado a lo largo de estas semanas y que todavía ahora continúa en negociaciones. Esperemos que nos lleven a, a buen puerto. Estamos a tres semanas del 1 de enero de 2021, es decir, a tres semanas de un nuevo acuerdo, de un nuevo marco, perdón, de relación con el Reino Unido. ¿Cuál? Pues sinceramente y desgraciadamente a día de hoy no lo sabemos y eso añade máxima incertidumbre a un momento que es ya muy, muy complicado. No podemos deshacer el Brexit, pero desde luego lo que podemos y debemos es tratar de rebajar la incertidumbre y generar confianza. Necesitamos ofrecer a la ciudadanía, a los operadores económicos, a la comunidad científica e investigadora información relevante, veraz y fácilmente comprensible sobre los cambios que se avecinan, sobre los planes de contingencia si es que estuviéramos en el peor escenario o sobre las nuevas reglas de juego a aplicar en adelante. Creo que la Comisión ha de hacer un gran esfuerzo de comunicación y desde luego por la parte de que representa el Gobierno vasco, estamos dispuestos a colaborar en ese esfuerzo para informar y acompañar a nuestros operadores en un momento de cambio. Gracias. Es que recaso. Gracias. Uh, the floor now to Patrick Schwarz Kiefer for one minute. Vielen Dank, sehr geehrter Herr Präsident, verehrter Bürgermeister. Diese Debatte ist eine traurige und verbitternde Debatte. Wir sprechen ja über den Brexit und seine Folgen. Man spricht sehr viel über die wirtschaftlichen Folgen vom Brexit, natürlich berechtigt. Worüber aber weniger gesprochen wird, sind die gesellschaftlichen Folgen. Aus unserer Region sind viele ins Vereinigte Königreich gezogen und da ein neues Leben gestartet, Familien gegründet. Nach dem Brexit bin ich mir sicher, dass sie weniger, weniger Kontakt zu ihrem Heimatland haben werden, was in vielen kleineren Ortschaften ein weiterer Schritt Richtung das Ende des Gesellschaftslebens wird. Die negativen Folgen vom Brexit kennen wir. Aus diesem Grund hoffe ich, dass die aktuelle Streit über das Budget und Next Generation EU gelöst wird und man es vermeiden kann, dass in ein paar Jahren ein solches Gespräch mit dem Bürgermeister von Budapest stattfindet. Vielen Dank. Thank you very much. The floor now to Ellen Nauta van Morsel for one minute. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, as a member of the contact group and Dutch delegation, I would address uh, th briefly two points. The first point is that continuing planning is now more important than ever. Also, continuing planning in the UK is necessary. Despite all the good and intensive preparations within the EU, disruptions might occur. Secondly, in the Netherlands we have close economic ties with the UK. A no-deal scenario will have serious consequences for certain sectors and for local and regional economies. Therefore, local and regional authorities should be involved in the creation and distribution of the Brexit Adjustments Reserve. It's essential that the reserve can be used in a short period of time to help alleviate the consequences in most affected sectors and regions. 
we must prevent the rise of unemployment rate and the bankruptcy of local, regional and national businesses. Thank you. Thank you very much. The floor now to Paula Fernandez Viana. One minute. The floor to Elizabeth Nebreda Villa for one minute. Thank you, Mr. President, dear Mayor, dear colleagues. Hoping for the best, prepare for the worst, and unsurprised by anything in between, wrote a once Maya Angelou. Those words came to my mind after the decision of the British government to withdraw the clauses of the UK Internal Market Bill that jeopardized the withdrawal agreement and the protocol on Northern Ireland. This is a positive step. However, as Ms. von der Leyen said, trust is good, but law is better. And there are still too many open fronts to fight. Let me be clear, for Catalonia and the government I represent, reaching a deal is key. We are deeply worried about the consequences that a no agreement scenario would bring about for around 19,000 Catalans in the UK and Britons in our universities and research centers. Nonetheless, we understand that the deal can't be at any price. We must put the interests and needs of our citizens at the center and also guarantee the right and the willingness of Scotland and Northern Ireland to remain in Europe. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. The floor now to Paula Fernandez Viana. One minute. Okay, then our last speaker for today, for one minute, Mr. Peter Kaiser. Wichtig ist, dass ich auch mit jener der Europäischen Union des Ausschusses der Regionen auf alle Fälle gemeinsam weiterentwickeln lässt. Ich bin auch der Meinung, dass wir ein, einen sanften Brexit brauchen. Er würde die wenigsten Nachteile für alle bringen. Gleichzeitig aber dürfen wir unsere Prinzipien jedenfalls nicht verwässern. Entscheidend für mich ist auch, dass die Ideen einer Friedensunion in diesen Deal nicht gefährdet werden. Die EU hat eine lange Tradition als Friedensbereich. Der Ausschuss der Regionen weiß ganz besonders, wie wesentlich und wichtig das ist. Ich möchte darauf verweisen, dass insbesondere die Bildungszusammenarbeiten, die Bereiche der Jugend, der Erasmus-Programme für uns ganz wesentliche Bestandteile einer Zukunft sein werden, bei der ich hoffe, dass das allerletzte Wort in der Geschichte auch im Verhältnis Großbritannien zu Europa noch nicht gesprochen ist. In dem Sinne, wie nie der Deal, wir brauchen eine Lösung. Eine Lösung mit europäischen Prinzipien. Thank you very much. Uh, the floor now to our colleague, uh, Mr. Hablo. Thank you so much. I think it's important that the negotiations leder till ett resultat om trovärdigheten för medborgarna i EU ska finnas kvar mot unionen. För EU bör koncentrera sig mera på de övergripande med frihandel och fri rörlighet. Eftersom jag i en liten region i Europa, Åland, vi har egen lagstiftningsbörighet så, så blandar man sig för mycket i små frågor istället för att se till stora. Så därför är det viktigt att förhandlingar leder till resultat. Annars tappar europeiska befolkningen trovärdigheten för EU. Tack så mycket. Let me try one more time if uh, Ms. Viana Fernandez is uh, available now. Okay, does anyone else want the floor? Okay, let me inform you that uh, even if uh, Michel Barnier uh, could not be with us today, he has, uh, he has sent a strong political message. Ahora. Sí, buenas tardes, presidente. Buenas tardes, un momento. Gracias, presidente. 
I was saying that uh, even if Michel Barnier could not be with us today, uh, he has sent a strong political message that will be included in the press release uh, that we will uh, uh, have after the debate is over, which is very important. So let's go back. Uh, I think we had Miss Fernandez. Disculpar y agradecerle esta deferencia, presidente. Agradecer que en hola. este pleno, hola, hablemos del Brexit eh, y, y agradecer también, como digo, esta deferencia y disculparle. Coincido que es un tema de enorme relevancia para las regiones europeas y de manera especial para las regiones atlánticas, como es mi región Cantabria. Un 25% de la actividad global del puerto de Santander está relacionado con el Reino Unido siendo el más afectado el que lleva a cabo el Britannic Ferries con sus 250.000 pasajeros al año y todos los vehículos que mueven. Todos los puertos atlánticos se están preparando para contrarrestar los posibles efectos duros del Brexit. En el caso de Cantabria, el objetivo es que las líneas que conectan Santander con el Reino Unido no sufran un impacto significativo y que las operaciones no se ralenticen o se deterioren. Las regiones atlánticas compartimos la ambición de crear la macroregión atlántica que, aparte de ofrecer un marco más estructurado para la cooperación dentro de la Unión, podría abrir la puerta a la participación de países y regiones terceros como el Reino Unido. Nos gustaría que esta idea se tuviera en cuenta a la hora de implementar el futuro marco de relaciones con el Reino Unido que salga de la negociación que esperemos que pueda salir. Muchísimas gracias y nuevamente mis disculpas. Gracias. No problem, we understand. Thank you very much. Enzo Bianco is our last speaker for one minute. Grazie, Presidente. Grazie di cuore al Sindaco di Londra per il suo bellissimo intervento. Io personalmente vivo questo problema perché mia moglie eh, è cittadina londinese ed è anche cittadina italiana. Mi sente? Mi sentite? Ringrazio di cuore il sindaco di... Eh, ringrazio di cuore il sindaco di Londra per il suo bellissimo intervento. Io vivo personalmente questi problemi perché mia moglie è cittadina eh, italiana ma è nata a Londra ed è cittadina britannica e anche eh, gli inglesi che hanno la doppia cittadinanza in questo momento stanno vivendo problemi molto molto seri. Posso fare una domanda dal profondo del cuore al sindaco di Londra? Pensa che fra qualche tempo, fra qualche anno, possa... Eh, i britannici possono cambiare opinione e con una iniziativa politica molto forte e anche composita ritornare a un'idea di rientrare nel, nel, nell'Europa. È un sogno che coltivo, spero che ci siano le condizioni politiche. So che non è facile, ma sognare qualche volta fa bene. Grazie. very much we will convey your question to the mayor dear colleagues um, we now have a break until uh, five o'clock uh, p.m brussels time we will resume at 5 p.m with the debate uh, with commissioner varelli on neighborhood and enlargement so see you in one hour and 15 minutes at five o'clock p.m thank you very much